when you want to install the phone burner app for Salesforce, there's two ways you can do this. You can go to the little menu in the upper right hand corner and you can go to the app exchange directly and then just do a quick search for phone burner. Once you've found the app, all you need to do is click on the get it now button and it'll walk you through the steps. But before we do that, let me show you one other way you can get to the app exchange to the and to the phone burner app. From your phone burner account, you can go to the my account button and then go to the my account page. On the my account page, you can click on the Salesforce integration link and we have a direct link to the phone burner app exchange listing right here and you just click on the view the listing button and it takes you to the same place. From here, you just click on the Get It Now button, then make sure you're logged into the App Exchange. Then you'll have two options. The first option is to install in production. The second option is to install in Sandbox. I'd recommend, if you, if you feel comfortable with it, going straight into production. There's nothing in the Phone Burner app that's going to cause any, any issues with your data, but if you're not sure about it, by all means, you can go with the Sandbox. If you decide to install in Sandbox, Make sure you go back to your phone burner account and enable the Salesforce Sandbox option. Make sure that's set to yes. Otherwise, you're going to have some issues using the app. And then once you go into production, then you'll need to switch this back to no and save settings. But in this training, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install it into production. So I'm going to click on the install in production. Go ahead and agree to the terms. You will most likely want to install for all users, but that'll be a decision that you'll need to make here. I'm going to install for all users. Now Salesforce has done the installation and we can hit the done button and you'll see phone burner is now an installed package in your account. You should also see phone burner listed as an option in your menu in the upper right hand corner. Now that you've got phone burner installed in your Salesforce account, we need to get your phone burner account attached to your Salesforce account. So we're going to go back to phone burner. And from here we need to generate our API key and get our user key and we're going to copy this information over to Salesforce. So we just do a copy and paste real quick and we go to the account tab within the phone burner app in Salesforce and you'll see the option to add the API key and the user key. And then don't forget to save. Once you save it, it's not a bad idea to go to another page and then come back to the account section and make sure that everything is, is still there. Once you've done that, you've now got your two accounts tied together and you should be able to start using Phone Burner and Salesforce together. Now that you've got the two connected, let's talk about how you can record a voicemail. So you can either record a voicemail from within your Phone Burner account by going to Dial Sessions, Phone Burner Settings, and Voicemail Library. And here you'll see the instructions for recording or uploading a voicemail. Or directly in Salesforce, you can go to the Voicemail Recordings tab, and you'll see the instructions for recording a voicemail as well as any recordings that you've already done. Now once you've got your, your voicemail recorded and you've got Phone Burner connected, now you can start making calls using Phone Burner in your Salesforce account. And Phone Burner works out of two objects within Salesforce, either the leads object or the contacts objects. And you don't have to be in the Phone Burner app in order to use Phone Burner. You can be in any one of your views within Salesforce. So for example, I'm going to load the sales view. And you'll notice I've got the leads and contacts objects here. If I wanted to make calls from the leads object, I'd click on leads. And then from here, I would load a view. So any of your views that you've already got created, you can select, or you can create a new view. But either way, you need to load a view. Once you load the view, you're going to select your contacts and press the Begin Dial Session button. Now you'll notice I don't have a Begin Dial Session button here. Every once in a while, this will happen on an install within Salesforce. Salesforce doesn't properly add the buttons, and it's easy to get this fixed. You just go up here to your, uh, your little setup section and then over in your app setup you expand customize and in this example I'm going to show you how to add the button to the leads section or the leads object so I'm going to expand leads and then we're going to click on search layouts 
and we're going to click on Edit Leads List View. From here, you'll see your Begin Phone Burner Session is an available button, and we're going to add it. Once we add it, we're going to go ahead and save it. Now, because Leads did not have the Begin Dial Session button, there's a good chance that Contacts did not get the Begin Dial Session button as well. So while we're here, we're going to go to Contacts, and we're going to expand that and we're going to go to search layouts we're going to edit contacts list view we're going to select the button add it and save now when we go back to leads and we load a view now we're going to see the begin phone burner session button we select our contacts Press the Begin Phone Burner Session button, and that's going to bring up what's called the Phone Burner Dial Session window. We can now enter our username and password. This is our Phone Burner username and password, and log in. Now the two systems will talk to each other, and Salesforce will send over the contacts that we just selected. Once they've connected, we hit Continue. And then on the, the next page, it's going to show us that we've got five contacts to call. We can choose the voicemail that we want to use for this particular dial session. We can use a disposition set. Phone Burner allows you to create custom disposition sets, which are the buttons that you'll see on the bottom of the screen to set the status of the call. If you've got call recording enabled, you can either leave it enabled or disable it for this session. And for those of you who have the local ID feature turned on on your account, you have the option to enable or disable that on a per session basis as well. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those on and I'm going to hit continue. Now all I need to do is get my phone connected to Phone Burner. One of the great things about Phone Burner is it does not require any special equipment. You don't need a special headset that you have to figure out how to plug into your computer. You just use the phone that you're used to using and you just dial into our system. So I'm going to go ahead and conference us into the line right now. All right, so now we're dialed in and we're connected. We still have our five, five contacts queued up to be called. And you'll notice one thing right here, your caller ID. This is the caller ID your contacts are going to see when you're making calls. You can actually set this caller ID to a specific number in your phone burner account. So I'm going to move this dial session window off the screen for a second. We're going to go back to the phone burner account. We're going to go to dial sessions. We're going to go to phone burner settings. And we're going to go to caller ID. From here, you can add a 10-digit phone number, any 10-digit phone number that you have access to. Check the disclaimer and update your caller ID. And that would be the default caller ID your contacts will be seeing when you're making calls. And now that we're ready to make calls, let's go ahead and hit the Start Dialing button. So you can hear it's calling my, my phone. I'm going to mute that line, let it go to voicemail. I want to show you how quick and easy it is to leave a voicemail with Phone Burner. You'll notice the buttons across the bottom here. When it goes to voicemail, you'll see this Leave Voicemail button light up. And one thing you'll notice with Phone Burner is you don't have to listen to the entire greeting. You don't have to wait for the beep. As soon as you know it's a voicemail, you can click that button and move on. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and answer the phone. Now you'll notice once I answer the line, we're live and we're connected to that contact. So there's no delays with Phone Burner. You're immediately connected with the contact so you can have that conversation with the contact. You'll also notice that the caller ID between those two calls changed because I have the local ID feature turned on on this account. The system changed the caller ID based off the phone number it was calling. Now at some point during this live conversation with my contact, I do want to click on the live answer button. And the reason why I want to click on that is it gives me the big end this call button. That way when I'm done talking to my contact, I can click on end this call and not have to wait for them to hang up their phone. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. That's, that's going to disconnect me from the contact. So you'll see we're no longer connected to our contact. 
but we're still connected to phone burner and we still have this contact record up in front of us. And one thing you'll notice about the contact record information is we pull the information directly over from Salesforce in what's called an iframe. In this particular case, we're calling a lead, so we see the lead details section. If I move that window off the screen and we go back to Salesforce, if I open up the contact record, this information here within the lead details, this is the information that Salesforce will send over to the dial session window. So if there's something that you would like to see in the dial session window, you need to be able to add it to your, either your lead details or your contact details. And you can add or remove information from this section by clicking on this little menu over here and clicking on Edit Layout. When you're editing the layout, you can drag information down into the contact or lead details section. Now there are certain things that you cannot add to your lead or contact details and those items Salesforce will let you know that they can't be added. So you can see this one right here can't be added to the lead details section. But anything you can add to the lead details section will be visible and editable in the dial session window right here. But don't worry too much if there's something that you need to have access to during a call with a contact. You can still access the full contact record very quickly by clicking on the Edit in Salesforce link right here. So we're going to click on Edit in Salesforce. And that's going to take us directly into this full contact record where we have access to edit and update anything we need to within the contact record in Salesforce. While we've got this contact record up in front of us, let me point out a couple of things to you here. When you're making calls in phone burner and you're clicking on these little disposition buttons down across the bottom, phone burner is also automatically updating the contact record within Salesforce with a completed task based off the button that you clicked on. So for example, you can see this particular contact was called and the leave voicemail button was clicked. So you can see it's a call with phone burner and voicemail. It's a completed task, call type, and it tells you the duration of the call as well. All of the dispositions can post a custom subject to your Salesforce contact record as a completed task. So what you'll notice is that every time you press a button with phone burner, it's going to say call with phone burner dash and then the disposition. These dispositions are fully customizable. So if we go back to phone burner, we go to our dial sessions, phone burner settings, and dispositions. From here, we can edit any of our buttons. When you edit a button, this disposition field right here, this is what gets posted back to Salesforce when you click that specific button. So you can see on March 14th, I clicked the no answer button, which posted a status back to Salesforce of call with phone burner, no answer updated. That's because I had customized this button and changed the disposition to note that it was no answer updated. And every button is fully customizable. This is the information right here that you can use to run reports in Salesforce to generate additional lists and follow-up calls. So another cool thing you can do with phone burner, in addition to making it quick and easy to leave voicemails and get through your calls, is you can have phone burner also send follow-up emails based off the outcome of the call. So if we bring over our dial session window again, you'll see these buttons across the bottom. Each one of these buttons can have a different email assigned to them. So you can have a custom email go out based off the button that's clicked on during that dial session. So let me show you how you can do that in Phone Burner real quick. So I'm going to move the Dial Session window back off the screen and let's go to Phone Burner. We're going to go to Dial Sessions, Phone Burner Settings, and then Message Library. In the Message Library, you can go to the One Touch Email section. In the One Touch Email section, you can either add a new One Touch Email and start from scratch or you can use an existing email. So we'll just create a quick email here. Let's create an email for somebody who just signed up with our service. 
So we'll create a signed up email. We'll create a subject. And now we're going to create the body of the message. You can actually personalize these emails so it'll insert the contact's first name into the email or last name. So when you're starting the email, rather than just saying, hi, you can actually say, hi, John, or hi, Mary. And the way you do that is you use the personalization codes from the drop-down menu here. So we're going to select recipient's first name. And the system, when it sends that email, would say, hi, John, or hi, Mary, depending on who it's going to. Now these emails are fully HTML, so you can make them very pretty if you want to use some of the formatting here. You can even add pictures if you want to add pictures. You can insert hyperlinks if you want to insert any links into your emails. But one of the cool things that PhoneBurner allows you to do is also add trackable attachments. It's what we call Smart Sender. So you can click on this little option here and add any Smart Sender resources that you've added to your account. Smart Sender resources are are a way for you to send trackable files or videos even to your contacts. There's more details about Smart Sender through the Smart Sender tab in your back office if you'd like to learn more about that. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a resource and then I'll close out the email and then I'm going to save changes. So once you've created an email in your phone burner account now we can go assign that email to a disposition button. So let's go to Dial Sessions, Phone Burner Settings, Dispositions, and we're going to go down to, in this particular case, my signed up button is in my time change disposition set. So I'm going to edit that disposition set. I'm going to click on Signed Up. And here where it says Follow Up Message, I'm going to choose my signed up email and save. And from now on, whenever I'm in a dial session and I click the signed up button, the system will automatic, automatically send that new email that I just created. And so I'm going to go ahead and mark this contact as signed up, and that'll move us on to the next contact. And now we're calling the next contact. I'm going to mark this one as no answer, and then I'm going to end my session here. Once the session ends, you're going to see a summary of the results of your call from that, from that session. And now I'm going to go ahead and close that window. Okay, so that's the basics of actually doing a dial session with Phone Burner. Now there's one other thing I do want to cover here real quick before we close out this training, and that's back in Salesforce. So let's jump back over to Salesforce. Now when you install the Phone Burner app in Salesforce, in most cases, everything's going to install just fine. Now there's one other thing that I've seen come up every once in a while, and that is the API key and user key. So if we go back into the Phone Burner app, and we go to the account section. Right here where you need to add your API key and user key, sometimes after you install Phone Burner, this box and this box will actually not be here. And so if that happens to you, let me show you how you can add that back. You'd go to Setup. From the Setup page, we go and expand Customize, and then we expand Users, and we go to Page Layouts. When you click on Page Layouts, you may be looking at a screen like this. If so, you're going to click on Edit for the Foam Burner package. However, in many cases, you'll be taken to a page that looks like this straight away. And you'll notice here, there's a Foam Burner API key and a Foam Burner user key. They're grayed out because they are already added to this account. But if they didn't get added or installed properly for you, all you do is drag them down here to the Additional Information section and then save. Once you do that, when you go back to account, you'll see the API key and user key options there, and you can copy and paste the API key and user key over. One other issue that you may run into when you're first getting started with Phone Burner is making sure that you select your contacts before you begin a dial session. So let me show you, let me show you what would happen if you try to start a dial session but you don't have any contacts selected. So I'm going to go to, in this case, I'm going to go to my contacts object, and I'm going to load a view. Now once I load this view, if I forget to select the contacts and I click the Begin Phone Burner Session button, that'll bring up the dial session window just like it would normally. But as I go through to set up this dial session, I'm going to get this error here. And that just means that no contacts were selected. And So all I need to do is just close this window, select my contacts, press the button again to begin the dial session, 
and now the system will let me go forward.